There's an old saying that all disease begins in the gut, and I believe that that is true for multiple sclerosis also. Research shows that people that suffer from multiple sclerosis have different types of bacteria and other microbes that live in their digestive tract. Also, research shows that people that suffer from multiple sclerosis have a leaky gut. What that means is that pathogens or disease-causing microbes and their toxins can cross the intestinal barrier, move into our blood and into our body. This activates our immune system, both around our body, but also in the central nervous system and causes nerves to become inflamed and also causes demyelination. I'd like to share a study with you called Contribution of Gut Barrier Changes to Multiple Sclerosis Pathophysiology. And the year is 2019 and it's published in the journal Frontiers in Immunology. So what is leaky gut? Before we talk about leaky gut, let's talk about what a healthy gut is. So normally in our intestines, as we're digesting our food and the food is moving through the intestines and maybe we have taken in some toxins or some different microbes also, the lining of the intestines acts as a barrier. It prevents bacteria, different types of microbes, toxins from them, and other environmental toxins from moving into our body. It acts as our natural defense. And so it is comprised of different cells, and you may have heard of tight junctions where they're held together really tightly. So it will our intestinal barrier will only let through certain nutrients that our body needs, and maybe partially digested foods will be kept out also. When we go on antibiotics, we devastate our good healthy microbes and that leaves the disease causing microbes. Many of them are not affected by antibiotics. Then they start to grow. They have lots of room because we have decreased the population of the good guys that I call them the health promoting microbes that defend us. So then as these bad disease causing microbes start to grow, they love it when we eat processed carbs. And as they start to grow, they cause inflammation and inflammation is really our immune system fighting them. And that occurs in the intestines, in the, along the lining of the intestines. We end up with leaky gut. And as we have the leaky gut, then we lose the integrity of that, the tight junctions and we have microbes passing through into our blood. We can have different toxins from the microbes, environmental toxins. We can have partially digested food. We can end up with food sensitivities also. As these microbes move into our bloodstream, this activates our immune system. And as the immune system is activated, that also can activate the immune system in the central nervous system, and it can actually cause our blood brain barrier to become leaky. So that is what happens when we are dealing with a leaky gut. And research has shown that this is the case in people that suffer from multiple sclerosis. So what they've shared is that intestinal permeability. So that means that it's allowing more things to go through than it should. So those permeability changes in multiple sclerosis have been described in research. And microbiota dysfunction causes the development of neuroinflammation. And in both animal studies, but also in human research, and also including multiple sclerosis. So this has all been shown in various different studies. So what can cause leaky gut? I believe that the biggest factor would be the overuse of antibiotics, most definitely. But other things can also, for example, low vitamin D. That not only impacts how our immune functions, but it also can affect how we are or if we are absorbing calcium. And if we have decreased absorption of calcium, that can also lead to a more permeable intestinal barrier, which would allow things to go through that should not go through. So normally our intestinal barrier is like a natural defense. It really, it's like our skin. It is protecting us from becoming infected with, from different microbes or having different toxins enter our body. There are certain biomarkers that researchers are starting to use to kind of measure and identify if people have intestinal permeability issues. 
And this is really helpful as we, with the MSIDI, as we are moving towards starting clinical trials, what we would like to do is to find what types of infections are commonly found in multiple sclerosis, what types of parasites especially, and then better testing for them. And of course, protocols, of course, ways to treat them. So those would be th what we're wanting to study, but it's really helpful to find out, okay, what things are we going to be measuring? So right now, research is showing that a, a molecule or a, a compound called zonulin, which is produced by our body in response to inflammation. So it definitely will increase the permeability, not just of our the digestive tract lining or the intestinal lining, but also of the blood brain barrier. And they are, we find increased concentrations of this zon zonulin um, chemical inside the blood of people that are suffering with relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis and they are in a flare situation. So if somebody has relapsing remitting MS and they're going through a flare and they measure the zonulin in their blood, they'll find that they have elevated concentrations of this. Another one is called intestinal fatty acid binding protein, intestinal fatty acid binding protein. It, for short, it is IFABP. And it's used also to measure intestinal permeability in multiple sclerosis. A third biomarker that they're using to measure the intestinal perme permeability would be interleukin-17 and interferon gamma. And they both have similar side effects. And these are released as immune response. So when we have invaders in our body, our immune system will put out different molecules and chemicals to alert different parts of our immune system to come in and fight and save us, protect us. And so this is all part of like the cytokine cascade. And so we can measure this inside our blood. Um, if And we know that if there are elevated levels of these, they will definitely be causing increased permeability in the intestinal barrier, but also in the blood-brain barrier, especially for the interleukin-17 and the interferon gamma. So it's a really vicious cycle between intestinal dysbiosis or dysfunction. They're very much similar. So dysbiosis means we're really out of balance. We have far too many disease-causing microbes and not enough health-promoting microbes. And dysfunction is really when we're having microbiota or intestinal dysfunction, it is that when you don't have all the health promoting microbes present, then we have this breakdown of the barrier of our natural defense that protects us. And we end up with the neuroinflammation. So that is the problem and we have to correct that. That is how we recover. The health promoting microbes, they do a lot of things for us. And I talk about that on my masterclass training, but when we're talking about the permeability of the intestinal lining, they really help to regulate it. So things that they will do is produce short chain fatty acids, which definitely will help to make the tight junctions more tight, or the, it'll increase the tight junctions and also activate different receptors that will promote uh, cell proliferation, so like increased cell production and antibody synthesis, so making antibodies, and also certain antimicrobial compounds, things that are antimicrobial to kind of knock back the bad microbes. They find that people who suffer with MS often have low-grade endotoxemia, which would be like a low-grade toxins in the blood of people that suffer from MS, which would cause these pro-inflammatory cytokines, again, it's an immune response to the toxins in our blood when we're suffering with MS. And that is what's activating our immune cells in the central nervous system also. So that's a really important thing to understand is that these nerves, these immune cells are not just activated in our tissue and in our blood streams, but also in the central nervous system and also having the leaky blood brain barrier. So in our, I did a couple of videos just a few weeks ago, one on the blood brain barrier and multiple sclerosis. And I also did one on the microbiome and multiple sclerosis. So if you haven't watched those, make sure to watch those also.
So what I'd like to do right now is just to share with you what happens when people start to treat these infections. So the topic today, we talked about how the intestinal lining becomes leaky, that microbes are able to move into the blood, they move into different organs, they can move into the central nervous system. And that is just one of the ways that we do end up with this parasitic infestation. We can also end up with parasites through biting insects. So that we're just talking about one way today, but we don't have to wait for all the research. It's going to take time for these researchers to really understand which of the infections are causing chronic are causing all chronic disease, but especially multiple sclerosis. So what can we do in the meanwhile, we can, treat these infections ourselves, And that's what the wellness champions are doing. So I just wanted to share a few successes because we have the Live Disease Free Academy. We've helped over 700 students in their recovery, working towards recovering. And some have fully recovered, some are on the journey. And the life-changing experiences are so exciting. And the whole purpose of the academy is to teach the students how to treat these infections, how to play an active role in recovering. And that is how they have the greatest amount of success. So the first student I'd like to share with you is a grad. And so she finished the 90 day program and she still is treating and she just sent me an update. We just had our call last night. So these are all just fresh, hot off the press. She shared, I'm doing great. I'm feeling 90% better recovering from MS. I feel like the fourth round of uh, parasite treatments or drug treatments is not just parasites. Well, they're all parasites, but they're treating parasites and then finally and then taking a break. And that's one treatment cycle. She's done three and she feels by the fourth round that she will feel 100% symptom free. And her chiropractor was fascinated by the worm pictures that she gave him and is very interested in everything that she's doing. He hasn't seen her for a couple of years. So he has been helping her through energy testing to determine which of the treatments are most helpful for her. So excited for her. The next student, so this is a student who's also recovering from multiple sclerosis, but she is just in the prep phase. So at the start, we follow the live disease free eating plan. We greatly reduce the food to the infections, and with that, she has noticed with just and supporting the body, she hasn't started any treatments yet. The update she gave me about a week ago was that I'm feeling so much better. Now my confidence has improved immensely. Walking and balance is still improving also. Bladder is a lot better having bowel movements every day, which is a really important part before we start treating. And then I just got the update yesterday. She said, in general, I've had a really good week. One day wasn't so great. I'm feeling a lot better since I started. Now I'm at the stage where I feel I won't really have huge improvements until I start treating and I'm so ready to start treating. I still have some brain fog and vision issues. I'm really feeling positive about the treatment. I'm looking forward to seeing further improvements in my symptoms and quality of life. So you'll notice that just with supporting the body, she already was starting to notice that she was able to walk a lot better and her balance was improving. As we decrease the food to those infections, they become less active, and then we start to have less inflammation and symptom improvement. The next student shared, I'm feeling so much better when I'm getting up in the morning and my walking has been quite a bit better in the past few days. Again, she is just a newer student and she's just getting ready to treat. This next student is a healthcare professional. And yes, we do have healthcare professionals that have MS wanting to recover in this program. Definite improvements in my mobility just with the eating plan, she shared. Another student shared just in the past couple of weeks, my numbness has decreased a lot. And then the last one I wanted to share with you is that this student, she is ordering the parasite treatments. So she hasn't started treating yet, but she's going to start right away as soon as she has them. And she shared, I'm having so much more energy than I've had in the past. I was able to do a little hike and also take longer walks with my guest, which is such a blessing. So this is what we see as we treat these infections is that we can have so much recovery that we did not know possible. So if this is the first time that you've met me, and you're like, Pam, this sounds really interesting, but I need more information, watch our videos on YouTube, Make sure to watch the one on the blood brain barrier and also the microbiome and multiple sclerosis. Watch the infection playlist. This is all on YouTube channel, Live Disease Free. 
And you can start to change your diet. Follow, there's a playlist for the Live Disease Free Eating Plan. And when you need support, when you would like someone to help you with a game plan and, and supporting you along the way to treat these infections, that's what I can help you do in the Live Disease Free Academy. If you're at that place, make sure to watch my masterclass training. Take care and bye-bye for now.